Thinking about what to say for blue reflection is odd because there are so many things I don't like about it and lots of things were done pretty poorly. But for some bizarre reason, I like this game. Why is that? <laughs> to be perfectly honest here, it was just so damn cozy. <sighs> yeah, I said it, cozy. I'm not a cozy game person. I mean, usually when people refer to cozy games, they tend to be farm sims and stuff. But Blue Reflection truly was comforting and oh so relaxing. It's not a long game, and so I think that made certain crappy aspects of the game not so crappy. So let's get into it. Blue Reflection is a magical girl game about a high school girl named Hinako who was a really talented ballet dancer, but due to an injury, she finds herself unable to dance anymore. Then one day, she's given magical girl powers and becomes a reflector, as they call themselves, and basically has to save the world. This sounds a lot cooler than it was, but the story was compelling enough to want to keep going. I'm also a big Magical Girl fan. I mean, huge Sailor Moon fan here. Like, I've seen all the original seasons, read the manga, even played the JRPG that wasn't released in the West for the Super Nintendo. I freaking love Sailor Moon. There's something about the Magical Girl genre that is so exciting to me. Who knows? Honestly, maybe it's just because I was exposed to it at such a young age that it made a, a clearly a big impression on me for life. <laughs> Either way, when I found out about Blue Reflection and how it was a PS4 JRPG about magical girls in modern day Japan, I was all over that. So on paper, the game sounds amazing. Well, I mean, it does to me, but it has a lot of flaws. For starters, the characters are a little dry. I mean, to be honest, I didn't even really care about the main character that much. She's actually really unlikable. <laughs> you have to do a lot of social link type missions in this game that have a Persona vibe to them, but it's not, it's nothing like Persona because none of the social link activities mean anything for the story. I mean, you can just look away and press X over and over again just to get it over with. You don't gain experience from battling enemies, so it's not like you need to grind to level up. You gain levels the more time you spend with your friends in the game. So yeah, it's kind of tedious and annoying, but it's not horrendous. In terms of the setting, I love modern day, but you really just spend all your time at the school and don't really walk around anywhere. So that was kind of a bummer and felt kind of low budget to me. But hey, let's talk about the positive aspects. I loved the graphics in this game, seriously. They were anime style, but really crisp and clear looking and yet somehow real. They're not flashy or overly amazing, but I personally thought the game looked great. Music wise, the game is solid. Great themes and a great score overall. I remember everyone telling me the score was so great and they were right. Is it the best score ever? No, but definitely solid and a highlight of the game for sure. The battle system was another highlight for me. It's simple and nothing special, but the animations for each attack were gorgeous and I just like the aesthetic of the battle sequences. Even the enemies looked polished and suave, just really cool looking. Boss battles in this game were pretty intense and the enemies almost looked too hardcore and anime for what the game was, so it made it even more awesome. It was like battling a god every time. Just really badass, honestly. You'd be waving a little wand at this godlike epic mech looking boss and it was so anime in the best way. So yeah, I think the battles are definitely fun, even if you don't gain experience points from them. I would turn this game on and be excited just to be a part of it. So overall, this game is definitely an average game, but for some reason, I still really liked it. You guys know me, if I hate a game, I am very vocal about it, like very vocal. I'm on Twitter constantly telling everybody what I'm playing, what I feel at the time. Sometimes I'll, uh, I will start off and I'll hate a game and then I will love it at the end so I can change my mind, but I'm definitely very open about how I feel about a game. I just like really being honest. My hatred towards a game might actually make someone play a game just because they tend to like the opposite of what I like. Honesty is key for me with these 
<laughs> reflections um, or reviews, whatever you want to call them. Either way, Blue Reflection might have been an average game, but my experience with it was overly positive. I enjoyed playing it, and that's what counts. Is this game for everyone? Absolutely not. But there's definitely an audience for it, and I'm actually really stoked for the sequel that comes out in November. My hope, though, is that lots of stuff from the first one is improved upon, and it makes for a better experience. Also, the translation in the first one... It's pretty shoddy. So I guess we'll see. It's on my Christmas list. Definitely check out Blue Reflection if you have the time and know what you're getting into. It's not super long, like maybe 20, 25 hours or so. So it's not a, a major commitment. So you don't have to worry too much about that. It's cute. It's fan servicey. My God, sometimes it's really fan servicey, and that's fine with me. But I know some people aren't into that. Um, but it just has a good feeling to it. I guess if you go into it knowing it's not a masterpiece like Dragon Quest XI or Xenoblade Chronicles, then I think you'll be good. Have you played this game? I'm curious what everyone else thought because it's not a 10 out of 10 game for me, but it's also one I would still recommend. Let me know in the comments below, and as always, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.